I praise God. Greetings to you all in the most matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank and praise God for this wonderful time God has given us. Beloved, we got to understand that in Jesus, we are more than conquerors. And as He is, so we are in this world. You know, where Jesus is, where we are also placed. Many a times we focus on the earthly things and miss heavenly glorious revelations and blessings from heaven. What of God says in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 7, but God being rich in mercy, remember this word, God is being rich in mercy because of the great love with He loved us. You know, His love is great. The way He loved is the way that nobody can love because of that love. What He did is just make sure to pay your close attention here. He said, even when we were dead in our trespasses, sins, he made us alive together with Christ. We were dead in our trespasses because when you commit sin, you know, the wages of sin is death. So when we are dead already in our trespasses, He made us alive together. This is the most important aspect of our life. Together with Christ. He already made it. He has already done it. He already cooked it. You got to have it. You got to receive it. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. We know this verse. It's not our deeds. It's not our acts. Now, today, what God wants to show and prove in our life is we have been raised and seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. We have been raised and seated with him in heavenly places. He says in this uh, sixth verse of Ephesians chapter 2 and raised us up with him, raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. In Christ Jesus, we have been preserved and protected and raised so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable richness of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The reason that he is being raised is to show this richness of his grace. Beloved, we all know that we are all in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Suppose this is the work and it's the word of God. And if you are in Christ, you are inside the Christ and you live with him on this earth and you suffer with him. He suffered on behalf of you and you died with him and you resurrected with him and you moved with him for 40 long days and you ascended to heaven with him and where you are seated is within him, with him and in him you are there. So where is your place is in him not outside, you're inside of him. That's the reason why, you know, we are not, uh, you know, seated in a nominal places. I've been seated here. We have been seated, yes. Being seated is very relaxed. You know, I stood many a times and gave sermons. And most of the times, Jesus preached his sermons while he was at place where he can sit and preach. He sat and preached many of his sermons. Praise God. You know, being seated means you are stable, you are able, you are in a resting place. You know, when you come to the place of worship, you feel like being seated there, not just standing all the time. 
Even sometimes uh, we raise up for worship and praise. Uh, people always come, oh, when we are going to finish this praise, when we are going to finish this worship. You know, some of the places in Europe and also in the um, in um, in in Russia, when I've been there, there is no chairs in the church. They stand as long as the service goes on. Praise God, their services are not long as our services, like a couple of hours or three hours we go on. But their services are only one hour and one and a half hours, sometimes two hours. But two long hours, even the priest and also the person who has been, who has been involved worship they just stand they don't sit praise God that's a good order of service I thank and praise God sometimes people say that when you stand and you stand right in many things and you sing very well you preach very well that's really good but at the same time when you are seated when you are at that resting place you know it gives that mighty and glorious aspect of being seated means you are in a resting place. You know, in the Old Testament, priest, whenever he used to enter into the most holy place, he never used to sit and offer all that he used to offer, but he used to stand and worship. There is no seat in the most holy place to sit down and offer that. I praise God. But our high priest, you know, he finished all that that God has given on this earth and been victorious and he's been seated at the right hand side of God. Amen. In Colossians 3, chapter 1, the chapter 3 verses 1 onwards, if you see, word of God says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That means, as you are already been raised, many people, you know, you complain that, oh, I fell, I fell in sin, or Sometimes when you are not right with God, when you are not reading Bible, when you are not praying, you use the word and terminology called, I'm backslidden or backslided or I fall uh, from that grace or from uh, that level of spirituality that you used to live. That means uh, the reason that you may be able to say that word that you are backslided or you fell from that area is because your eyes are not there. You are not focusing, but Jesus will never leave you. Praise God. He has promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Where he is, there we will be also. As he has promised that I'm going there to prepare the places, he will make sure that we are with him all the time. Then if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. That is a fabulous uh, statement that the Lord has given. You know, when you raise your height, when you elevate yourself, yourself, you see far beyond things that you used to see on the ground level. When I travel to most of the countries, uh, I make sure that if there is any kind of a tallest building where we can have a bird view or aerial view of the entire city, and then we go there, I go there and pray over that place to see how that city looks like and release that atmosphere and anointing on that place and podium. And sometimes when we don't have the time, when I'm coming down, when I'm landing on the plane from that arena, so on the plane itself, I'm, I used to pray on that area. When you see from top, you know, it is completely different the way that you see from the ground levels. Because sometimes you don't have any kind of equipment or elevators uh, uh, to see and take you to that higher level to show you the glimpse of how you can see the city. But I thank and praise God for the technology that the Lord has given so that we can see and elevate ourselves and see that aspect of how we can move on the Lord. 
Praise God, but God has seated us in the right place with Christ Jesus as the word of God says, uh, we have been raised us up. He's been raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Many a times, you know, we get deceived of what we see. Seeing is not just, uh, you know, believing. It is becoming. What you see, you will have. Surely, we all uh, fallen short of glory. And many a times, uh, you know, we are trying to encroach into the presence of God. As, uh, you know, we know about, uh, uh, you know, throne of God and throne room of God. But this is, uh, it's not just a realm. It's a grace that the Lord is going to give. It's not about the place or it's not about that podium that you are there. It's about the grace that the Lord is going to raise us up. So, some people may say or ask the questions that if you have been seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenlies on the right hand side of God, but we are not feeling it, we are not experiencing it, we need to understand that you've got to believe that you have been seated there and God is going to impart all those things uh, when you decree that and when you release that with him, when you have that fellowship with him, when you have that connection with him, you're going to release that. In Proverbs chapter 13, verses 20, word of God says, whoever walks with the wise, walks with the wise becomes wise, but the company of the fool will suffer harm. God wants us to walk with him all the time, not sometime, during the service time, during the prayer time. God wants us to walk with him all the time. That's the reason why he has promised that he will never leave us. Despite of being in the dungeons, despite of being in the sins, in any kind of situation that you've been going through, God will never leave us nor forsake us. And also, word of God continues to say in the Hebrew chapter 4, verse 14, um, you know, uh, onwards, it says like this. You can see that in the 11th verse uh, onwards, it's better way. So many of us have been uh, uh, fallen short. Uh, but, uh, you know, we couldn't enter into that glorious rest uh, and the uh, word of God is so powerful and it is taking us into the glorious rest. Since we have this high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Our confession is most important if we got to stand right with him. As you are a righteousness of God, that means right standing with God. If you are not confessing that you are a righteousness of God, where will you stand? You just stand on the place where you used to stand. But God wants us to elevate in through the confession because you will be moving towards what you are saying because your words will change your world. That means as you confess, you are going to have that uh, uh, you know, atmosphere in your spiritual life. For we do not have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, as we are, yet Without sin, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help in time of need. As we know that we need to draw near to this throne of grace boldly. So you got to be bold to come into this uh, seating area. Beloved, you know, when, uh, uh, you, when, whenever you talk about, uh, you know, uh, seated with Christ, that means uh, as Christ raised from death, Christ raised from every situation that has been happening over this world, you have that authority, you have that dominion over your life, and you will not go back into all those arenas this world has been suffering. When you observe the life of Jesus, he started his ministry with 40 
days of fasting and prayer under the leading of the Holy Spirit. In fact, after his baptism, it was written, we can see that Holy Spirit has taken over him. That means he was in the Spirit for 40 long days. After his death, on the cross of Calvary and after three days when he resurrected, he was been appearing to people for 40 long days in the glory. 40 days in the fasting, in the spirit, and he was been moving and receiving and waiting for the ministration. And after that, in the end of his ministration, he spent 40 days in the glory. What is that shows? That means he's preparing himself to elevate. Of course, he's been born of the Virgin Mary. He's been brought up with the father Joseph, with the, all the carpentry works, and he's been attached with all the emotional attachments and everything that has been there in Israel. But he prepared, had used himself for 40 days, prepared his ministration in the spirit, elevated himself in the heavenly places. Then he lived that life three and a half years and he ministered and then after the death on this earth and resurrection and he's been again segregated with the glorious glory travel for 40 long days and then he ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand side of God Praise God! Beloved, you got to observe this. How Jesus planted and planned for elevation and being seated at the right hand side of God. It's not just a nominal thing. You know, in the Word of God, uh, when, we, when we look into the Word of God in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, we can see that in the Ephesians chapter 1, uh, uh, Word of God says that uh, all our blessings, all our blessings are been, we have been blessed in the spiritually in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verses 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glory, glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Praise the Lord. All the blessings that you're receiving today, all the materialistic, spiritual, physical, emotional, financial blessings are oozing, are coming out from where? As the word of God says in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3, that all our blessings are already stored in the heavenly places. If you are not seated with Jesus in the heavenly places, how dare you're anticipating all those blessings, beloved. It seems a hundred years back, nobody was using shoes in one country, in one place. And there is a shoe seller and shoe manufacturer. He sent two of his salesmen to that place and told them that, uh, to sell the shoes and introduce the shoes and all. One guy, he sent uh, his, th those days, 100 years back, there was no telecommunications and all. They used to send a wire, you know, wire message, kind of telegram message and all. He sent a message to the owner saying that, here, nobody is wearing shoes. Please don't send any more shoes. Uh, and uh, please plan uh, uh, for us to come back to uh, another place and then other guy other salesman he sent a message same message here nobody is wearing shoes please send more shoes wow <laughs> the one guy other guy his counterpart he says that don't send anything and uh, send us back 
But the other guy, he says that nobody is wearing shoes, but send more shoes. That means he's confident enough that once uh, he introduces that he's gonna have a bombarding sales uh, and then he cannot just uh, uh, get uh, ha or have that kind of a you know deficit in his qu quantity or the stock uh, and immediately he want it more so he ordered in faith. Beloved, this is what happens in our spiritual life. When you face situations, circumstances, and uh, all the things that you have been uh, going through, some people, even the spirit-filled people, spiritual people, baptized people, born-again people, they complain saying, what God is doing? What is this situation? I'm praying so much. I'm doing so much. I'm doing too much in the presence of God. What am I going through? See, it's not what you're going through. It's what, where you're going to. What you're going through doesn't stay long where you're going to stays long and forever. But when you are going to the destiny and place, uh, you know why you care about what you're going through? Because uh, your problem and your situation, your circumstances uh, is not exactly that circumstances and situation. Your reaction to that is most important. So when you see where you're going to, as our word of God says, we have to fix our eyes and author and developer and finisher of our faith and walk in this world, our walk of faith. So as the word of God confirms to us, lift our eyes and raise us, us into the glorious revelations, we got to elevate ourselves. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 10 also says, have this mind among yourself if you don't have that mind that you are seated with Jesus in the heavenly places you always think that you are in the bottomless pit so you always fall down but God wants us to have this mind of Christ which is yours in Christ Jesus, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. You know, being born as a man a God, for a God, it is a greatest humility. Because God cannot be a man and man cannot be God. God reduced himself or uh, you know, humbled himself to become a man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient uh, to the point of death. God can never die. And God reduced or humbled himself as a man and he willing to die for, our, for ourselves because we are supposed to die. As wages of sin is dead, but he will, he's willing and obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven on earth under the earth. these three places in heaven on the earth under the earth why because he humble humble shall be exalted Beloved, sometimes, uh, you know, when, whenever we think uh, that we are seated with Christ, it's not the pride factor. It is that obedient factor. You've got to obey. It's not your own, uh, you know, works or deeds that is making you to be seated at the right hand side of God with Christ Jesus. It is his grace that has made us. But at the same time, it doesn't allow us to be proud or disobedient to his commands. But God wants us to be humble to maintain that level. You know, when you look at the people who has been prospered, are blessed in this world they are the most humble people I met with the highest authority to people 
like presidents and prime ministers and some of the ministers in many parts of the world, many countries, when I had a meetings with them and discussions with them, they are so humble. They are so, you know, uh, meek in their talk and conversation and receiving and hospitality was excellent. I was astonished to see their humbleness and meekness. The reason the Lord has elevated authority or those people is because of their humbleness and meekness maybe. Because authority comes from God. And every authority has been given by God. If you disobey the authority, you are disobeying God. Beloved, right now, as we are seated in the heavenly places, nobody can deny this authority. As we are in the right time, as governments are failing, and people are pondering all around the places what's been happening, and uh, ministers, they are not able to know what to do with all the pandemic and epidemic and endemic situations. Uh, they don't know the, where the world is heading to. This is a high time that we have to exercise the authority that God has given through Jesus Christ being seated on the right hand side of God and we should have the glorious move of the Holy Spirit. And as the word of God confirms to say, being found in the human form, he humbled himself. Even though we are human beings, we don't humble ourselves, but God wants us to humble ourselves. So, as uh, you know, in the uh, in in, in uh, Ephesians chapter nineteen, uh, one one verse, uh, Ephesians chapter one, verses uh, nineteen to twenty two. Also, as we read the scripture portion, it says uh, that you know, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power towards us to, who believe according to the working of His great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places for above all rule and authority and power and dominion above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come and not only that what he did he put all things under his feet and gave him as a head over all things to the church which is body the fullness of him who fills all in all that means why he made us to be seated with him is he wants to bring everything under our feet as he is so we are in this world if god has been doing for jesus he is going to do for us it is the same spirit that jesus has been filled you and me are filled it's not a different spirit it is the same anointing how Jesus moved, you and I can move. Even Jesus promised that greater works, greater works and greater miracles and greater, you know, all those healings that he has done, we should do. He commanded us to do so. And who is able to receive this? As Mark 16, 17 says, these signs shall follow those who believe. What they are going to do? They are going to keep the Satan under their feet and cast out every kind of obstacles. Why are you afraid? Are you afraid of the sickness? Are you afraid of the weakness? Are you afraid of the situation? You've been terrified. You've been thinking too much about everything that has been going on. And why are you not exercising the authority as you have been seated? with Christ Jesus, everything will come under your feet. Exercise that authority. Use that authority. Decree it. Declare it. This is a high time that you got to use the Chamberlain anointing as the Lord has commanded us to use. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why are you not doing it? It is a sin if you don't do it when you know that you can do it beloved don't do that sin 
when God has given us that position and power and anointing to do so. Let's move on. Let's go on and do that. What God has finished, what God has accomplished on the cross of Calvary, we should exercise that grace and finished works on the cross of Calvary. And as he's been seated on, the, on, on his right hand side, and we are going to have that glorious victory. Christ has finished. He said it is finished. He finished all that supposed to be done even in your life. Today, we are puzzled. We are in turmoil. What's going to take place in the days to come? I know when you know that God is holding you, and, uh, you know, why are you worried about what holds tomorrow? We don't care what holds tomorrow because uh, we are in the hands of God. We are in a safe hands. When you exercise that, when you claim that, God is going to give you that rest. You know, every time that you take that seat with Him, you take that seat of peace comfort and everything that is bothering you will never bother because you're already trusted that the finished works of uh, finished works of Jesus on the cross of Calvary you're going to claim and surely God is going to give that glorious victory in, a, in Romans chapter 8 verse 30 word of God says and those whom he predestined he also called those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Wow. Today, you wouldn't have heard this word if you are not predestined. You are predestined. So you, you are called. As the word of God says, no one comes to the Father until my, my no one comes to God until my Father attracts him. Even today, you are watching me because God the Father has attracted you. Not because of our ministry, not because of the minister, man of God. It is because God the Father has attracted you. You're watching us. You are on live. And surely you have been predestined. As the word of God says, those, is, those who are predestined, you are also justified. Whatever you might have gone through, but God is going to justify and then he's going to glorify. You know, glory is in heaven. We know that everything that is coming and having and we are using in this world, it is because of the glory. As the word of God says, my God shall supply all our needs according to the richness in the glory. So that means today, if you receive even the breath of life, if you ate something today, or if you have something in your life today, that means it is because of the glory. So when you know that everything in your life is coming through glory, as Jesus has granted that glory in the John chapter 17, uh, in a wonderful agreement with God the Father, especially from 20th verse to 23rd verse in John 17, and His glory, He gave it to us so that we can escalate into the glory. It is impossible to be seated at that position without glory. As Jesus has been glorified and then he's been seated. You and me are still in body. How dare we are claiming that we have been seated there. It's because Jesus has already given the glory to us. With that glory, we elevate ourselves as we've been glorified and we have been seated. Not to receive the glory to us, but to honor and give the glory to him. Beloved, as uh, Word of God says, as you will be fruitful, as you will be successful, as you overcome, our Heavenly Father will be glorified. God doesn't want you to be a failure. God doesn't want you to be a victim. God doesn't want you to suffer with anything that you're suffering. God doesn't want you to go through that everything that you've been going through. God wants you to be victorious as you claim that you're going to you, you're seated with Jesus and surely you are going to be raised and focus only on the things that you need to focus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says if you have been raised 
if you have been raised why if because some people are not raised they don't want to claim all these things full gospel charismatic spirit filled people always they claim that they have been raised with Christ Jesus seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God seek the things that are above today somebody called me for a far country and they said that you know we kept all of our life long hard earned all the precious things in one house and a big mansion of house and that house was completely burned and they don't have any place their entire life they worked hard they earned that place they built that mansion they kept very costly precious things in that house and it is suddenly burnt and nothing is there believer what are you working for what are you striving hard for people spend their whole life working hard and doing all kinds of toiling but you miss the most urgent aspect of your life if you don't seek the things that are above you miss that greatest opportunity that god is giving it to us beloved let us raise ourselves into that glorious realm and surely our life shall never be the same again because as we have been seated we are stable and we are able and as we continue anything that you do you know whenever jesus is going to receive anybody he's going to raise from that seat and he's going to receive us as he did it with stephen when he's stoned to death we can see that he's been he's been raised from the seat and he received it praise god beloved surely the reason that he's been raised is to receive him and to make him sit with him as we are raised up we are raised up with him and let's claim let's claim that word as uh, word of god is not going to go in vain what of god says in isaiah 55:11 so shall be my word but goes out of my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which i sent it that mean he gave a word that he raised us up with him in in heavenly places that's done it's done he sent it it's done are you claiming it are you receiving that blessings of being seated there if you are suffering today we are going to pray god is going to deliver you god is going to strengthen you god is going to exalt you god is going to take you to that new level that you never ever anticipated in your life beloved let's pray and ask the lord to raise us up to that standard and surely your life shall never be the same again as jesus promised us cast your cares cast your burdens upon me for he cares for you even though you believe that you are been seated with him still are you carrying your burdens some people they have that backlogs or backpacks you know it's very heavy sometimes even those they sit they don't want to unload that they don't want to remove that they sit with that backpack very heavy and they're sitting but still they are carrying that you can just loose it and relax yourself today jesus is telling you that you're carrying your backpack despite of being seated with jesus despite of receiving that authenticative authority to claim and receive things release your backpack release your burdens and surely your life shall never be the same again you will grow you will move into that holy of holies by the way glory is glory means weight literal weight weighing weight when you receive the glory that burden that weight that you're carrying will be released because that weight when you carry 
it is not going to keep you down it is going to raise you up so as god has elevated jesus you will be elevated and surely your life shall never be the same again